back to Pullman High School for the second of two varsity matchups between the Freeman Scotties and the Pullman Greyhounds. Yeah, both of these teams coming off wins here. Pullman trying to make it three straight after that original loss. Getting that win against Euphreda and then that shocking buzzer beater from Champawaki in that Wooston game. Trying to get, make it three out of four here. Move to three and one. Meanwhile, Freeman trying to get above 500. As starting lineups are getting announced here. Greyhounds having a couple overperformers uh, in that Wooster game and a couple underperformers pretty noticeably. Austin Hunt had a lot of trouble finishing at the rim. Uh, and Champ Walking had an exceptional game, obviously, with that buzzer beater. Another guy, uh, Quan, coming off the bench, um, kind of been a really big performer, had a quiet night last night. Uh, so a little bit of a flip the scripts last game, but it definitely worked out for the Hounds. They beat a really tough Wooster team. And definitely confidence as high as ever. Try not to get sleepier against this Freeman team, which definitely can put up a formidable fight. Freeman's loss came to a tough Colfax team. Uh, that's still going to be building a pretty good program, trying to make a state run in that lower division. So it'll be interesting to see how these two teams match up on the court. And Cade Rogers gets a start again, starting freshman. Yeah, he's been really impressive. Had a decent night last night. Had some clutch shots. Along with Gavin Brown, another guy who had a clutch three in that game and two clutch free throws. Able to keep the Hounds in that game and allow for that win last night. He is also starting this game. A little switch up there. Gavin Brown getting this nod for the start. But besides that, starting lineup stays around the same. As we get ready for tip off. Pwaki and Wells line up for the tip. Pwaki gets an aggressive forward tip. And travel is called as Brown tries to make a move to his right side and gets called for the travel. No dribble there. Took just one too many steps. Ball goes back to the Freeman Scotties. Coiner taking the ball up the court. Gets it to Wells. Wells loses possession. Quick pass from Brown to Rogers. Goes for the slam and it barely goes in. Crowd gets a little nervous there, but it does eventually fall for Rodgers, and that will start the game off. Rodgers with the two first two points. Hodges swinging it to Coiner. Freeman moving it around the interior. Going for a drive is Wells, and he's able to make his layup and not this game up early on. Press here from three man, three man on two. Just North Carolina Pwaki, Rogers comes to help, able to get him out. And a 10 second violation is called right as the ball passes mid court. Interesting, just barely gets the 10 count and the Scotties have a successful press. And get the ball back after making that layup. Second turnover for the Hounds already early in this game. Florence taking the ball, passes it out. Wells not able to handle it cleanly. Makes a move to his right. Looks like he's gonna post up, but instead pops it out to Hodges. Ends up back in the hands of Wells. Rogers able to take it away, see if he can get a fast break. Able to put up another way up, and he will have the first four points of this game. Tough drive there with Wells right behind him, but he's able to make the finish to his right side. The freshman looking pretty impressive in this beginning of this game. Yeah, so far having those opening four points, Omar already almost matching his points from the last game, doing a really good job playing a good role even early in this game. Hodges banks for three. Right away, just at the top, a couple passes, and he was able to get a quick shot off right away. A little pressure, but still able to put it in. Scotty's are in a full court press. Scotty's now taking the lead by one point. Rogers trying to get out of this press, still kind of double teaming, but now into their offense. Brown with a corner three, nowhere near. 
behind the backboard. Ball eventually ends up in the hands of Tanner Goldsmith. His floater does not go. Another fast break, Brown and Rogers, the faces of these fast breaks, Brown barely able to finish that, that layup rolls in. And Hound's six fast break points will keep them just one point ahead. Brown and Rogers kind of heading those fast breaks. Quick layup back from Hodges, lots of quick scores here. Very different from that Lewiston game we saw on Tuesday, very defensive matchup. This game going very quickly, both teams are already above six points with only three minutes in this game. Travel is called there as Champ tries to make a move. It ends up planning on two feet instead of one and can't get the shot off and then will go to the skies. That's the second travel of the game for the Hounds. As you see there, Brown rolling in that layup on that fast break. Hounds need to avoid these turnovers. Yeah, silly mistakes like travels are not what you want to see from this Hounds team. Is this Freeman team definitely going to put up a fight based on what we're seeing right now. Up one and that extends to three. Jack Florence with the bucket there. A lot of finishes on the inside. For uh, for the Scotties outside of that one three. Scotty stay in the full court press. Rogers dumps it off to Pawaki, who sets up the play at the top. Quick cutout from Brown. Pawaki tries to do it himself and is able to get through the Freeman defenders. Pawaki did have a lot of trouble trying to get through uh, those Lewiston guys. Freeman putting up much less of a fight in that first attack from Pawaki, and he's able to get his bucket. First bucket of the game for him, puts him at two. Goldsmith, ball getting swung around. Freeman really doing a good job of swinging it around. And a foul is called on Rogers. Big off comes in. Vic gonna sub in for Hunt right out of the gate. Actually, no, a little confusion. He's gonna go in for Rogers. Rogers had a good beginning of this game, but he gets pulled out. Bicklehop replaces him. Pass from Wells. Goes to Hodges, but able to be recovered by the Hounds. Milwaukee taking it up, looking to maybe drive again. Instead pops it out to Brown, who fakes and drives to his right. Pass to Hunt. And a jump ball is called. Tough fight for the ball there. A little confusing as to what the refs were calling there, but it is going to be Freeman ball off the jump. And they're up one. Yeah, Freeman up one with the ball. Under four minutes to go. About halfway through his first quarter. Ball goes to Hodges. Wells now faking a drive and ends up committing. But ball is blocked. Ball blocked by... Alex Bickelhoff. Yeah, Bickelhoff able to j get just behind that ball and tap it out, forcing Scotty's to an inbound play. Wells is open as he's able to finish. Walkie going for the block there, not able to get contact with the ball. Wells does a good job of finishing as the Scotties fall back into their press here. Brown getting double teamed, pass it to Pawaki right near midcourt. Milwaukee driving with his left hand, able to draw a foul there. Fouls me called on Goldsmith there. Milwaukee able to sell that and kind of look like he was bumped way off. And is able to get two free throws out of this, see what he can do, lower this Pullman deficit. Freeman playing pretty well right now. Expected Pullman to kind of have an early jump on this game, being energized, but kind of come in the opposite, a little sleepy there. Nash McLean and Jack or Gavin Zim come in. Two new guys checking into the game here. Pawaki misses first three throw. See if he can get the second one. Neither of the free throws do fall. That's unfortunate. For the Hounds, Freeman's able to rebound. McLean taking it down the court, passes it off to Goldsmith, who's driving down the left side. Brown a little unaware of it, but eventually is able to come away with the steal there. Good job eventually realizing where the ball was. Pass, cross court, quick pass from Milwaukee to Daniel Kwan is off target. Unfortunate waste of possession there. 
off that good steal from Gavin Brown, having good awareness. And that's the fourth turnover for the Hounds in this game. Yeah, turnovers hurting the Hounds early, whether it be travels or just giving the ball away. Going to need to clean that up if they're going to want to stay with this Freeman team, who's already up by three and doing a really good job moving the ball around, as you see. Ends up in the hands of McLean on the left side of the court. Ball goes to Hodges, back to McLean in the corner, not really having any, anything open. Wells driving, shot clock lowering down, five seconds left. McLean puts up a shot that's short. Rebound by Goldsmith, it's able to be finished by Wells, unfortunate. Ball bouncing around there for a little bit, no defensive rebound able to pull down. Good job there. Hounds break the full court press. Hodges nearly gets a steal, but ends up getting beat. Brown wide open in the corner. Ball bounces around, just misses. And Scotty's will be back with the ball. Goldsmith gonna wait and set it up at the top. Hodges able to pass, but Wells gets called with a travel before he's able to make a move. And they match the Greyhounds with four turnovers in this game. Greyhounds have about a two minute drought from scoring here. Haven't scored uh, since that timeout. Trying to get something rolling back here before we get into the second quarter of action. Northcroft, haven't seen, called his name very much, passes it off. Eventually ends up in the hands of Quan, who misses but gets his own rebound. Second effort is no good either. Unfortunate, Hound's just not able to finish anything right now. Shot's not going their way. Goldsmith passes it away. Intended for Zem. No finish though. Yeah, Quan taking a while with that ball, trying to roll, but ends up taking an extra step and a third travel there. Very unfortunate. Hounds need to avoid these travels. Yeah, that's their third turnover just on travels alone in this first quarter. Really messy. Uh, from the Greyhounds and very under, uncharacteristic of this team. Need to clean that up. Yeah, it's taking away opportunities to score. Yeah, and it definitely shows as Hounds are facing almost a three minute drought at this point. Tough shot there, eventually calling the foul. Looks like it's mostly gonna, most likely gonna be called on Bicklehop, the man defending McLean who tried to drive in and eventually gets knocked down and he will draw the foul. Looking to extend this lead above five points just in this first quarter. And he will. Brings Freeman up to six after that first made shot. Second one doesn't go. Brown able to get the rebound and it's knocked out by McLean. Pullman will have the ball. Another little area of mistakes from the Hounds has been those defensive rebounds, securing them, not letting Freeman get those offensive rebounds, especially just having that ball security and be able to come down with it right away. On the offensive side of the ball, Quan swings it to Brown, back to Quan, nice little finish there, right-handed on the left side. Able to put a nice little finger roll and get the Hounds into double digits with under a minute remaining. That's Quan's first made bucket. Yeah, four guys sharing the points so far. Rogers sitting on the bench right now with four deep three from Goldsmith, doesn't fall. Swung back out to McQueen who puts up a little floater, also doesn't fall, gets his own rebound, is able to put up a mid-air shot. Catches it in mid-air and puts it up. Nice shot there. Able to rebound off that lucky bounce right to him. Hound and capitalize. Struggling. Hound struggling to avoid these offensive rebounds. Yeah, those rebounds really hurting the Hounds right now early in this game, down six. Quan able to get a tough finish, but not quite there. Bicklehop shot no good, and two offensive rebounds for the Hounds allow them to score. Quan getting his second bucket in a row. A lot of offensive rebounds from both teams so far. Very interesting. And it looks like a block's gonna be called on the ground before the shot got off. Almost got a little lucky there as Hodges was able to drain a three right after that foul. And the clock is at one second, so the Scotties need to act quick on this possession. Third penalty on the Hounds so far in this quarter with one second left. Not going to really be able to do much. Quick shot goes up and it is no good from three for Goldsmith. So we will go to the first quarter uh, coming to a close here. Yeah, two really main uh, issues for both teams. One, offensive rebounds. Both of these teams allowing multiple offensive rebounds per possession 
as Cade Rogers and uh, Austin Hunt check in for this game. Offensive rebounds and then uh, just for the Hounds not being able to finish shots and having those silly turnovers uh, that we wouldn't expect from such a high caliber team. Yeah, I'm looking for the Hounds to put their big man in with Austin Hunt and Alex Bigglehop, hopefully to avoid allowing the Scotties to recover these offensive rebounds. Yeah, another interesting decision there was uh, Cade Rogers coming out of the game after having two fast transition points. No one else able to replicate that so far in the first quarter. Uh, he does check back in. Looks like Brantner decided that he was benefiting this team enough. Uh, so he will be back in and hopefully be able to allow some more production for the Hounds as we get started with the second quarter. Hounds ball after that missed three from Goldsmith to end that first quarter. Daniel Kwan, Philip Northcroft. Northcroft taking the inbounds. Pwaki jumps for the ball, able to secure the pass. Ball ends up back in the hands of Pwaki. Quick pass to the inside from Kwan, ends up in the hands of Rogers. And Hunt finally able to finish. Something we really need to see from Hunt uh, is that consistent ability to finish as he is such a big man and has such a height advantage. Uh, making those easy layups is gonna be really important, especially if the Hounds are gonna be able to secure offensive rebounds for their team. Yeah, it's good to see him put those shots and make them. Goldsmith trying to pass around Quan doesn't work out, ends up on the ground, gonna be a jump ball. Wells looking a little shaken up, but he's able to get up. Feel, looks like he's stretching out his right arm. Must have got bumped in the jump ball. Uh, it will be Scotty's ball still. As Coiner tries to inbound the ball. Hodges at the top. Swings to Goldsmith and a push is called. That'll be the first foul of the quarter. Called on Caleb Northcroft. His first pe personal penalty. Yeah, so far we haven't seen too many fouls called in this game, which is good for the Hounds. As last game, they've found some of their players in foul trouble. Coiner with the ball, doesn't quite know what to do with it, eventually dumps it off to Hodges. Ends up back in his hands, Freeman swinging the ball around from right to left. Shot is airballed by Wells, and Rodgers is able to quickly get the ball, trying to score in transition like he does. Quan gets hounded, not able to score, and Tiny cannot finish as well. And in transition, the Scotties are. Coiner can't finish, but Wells does it on the second effort. Nice mid-air shot, able to rebound that ball. And he's gonna get an and one. Freeman extends their lead to four. Hounds still sticking around so far. Deficit increasing one, by one point as Chris Schroeder checks in. For Rogers again, his second time getting subbed out. First time we've seen Schroeder in. Interesting to see Rogers getting minimal minutes as the second free throw does go through for Colton Wells. Freeman now in a three-man press. Schroeder able to break it. Oh. Ball from ball to Hunt goes through the, his hands, ends up in the hands of Wells, who's looking to drive straight off rip, no pass. Shot does not fall, rebounded by Hunt. And the Hounds will be right back to possession. Pawaki trying to hit a Euro step, ends up hitting a floater off of it. Really good shot there from Pawaki. That'll be his second buck of the game. Notable that he does have two fouls already in this game, possibly could end up being in a little bit of foul trouble. Would be really bad to see him go. A foul called on Daniel Kwan, on the ground, no shot. Wells trying to drive in there again. Having pretty little success. Most of Wells' points kind of coming off of the rebounds and those second efforts. Uh, although he is up to eight points leading score for this game so far. Scotty's still holding on to a three point lead here. Scotty's 
inbound the ball. Shot for three, no good. That's Grant on that shot. Haven't seen him, just checked in the game. Puts up a three and it's no good. And it looks like a foul is called on the Scotties, on Jack Florence. Another guy just checking in the game, the new guys. Not helping out this team so far on that first possession. And it will be Hound's ball. That's the Scotty's second penalty of the game, first of this quarter, doing a really good job limiting those penalties. But there is one that will prevent a jump ball. Instead resulting in just the Hound's ball, who still have possession. Juan at the free throw line, tries to pass into Pawaki, but it's eventually broken up by Grant. Good defense there to keep a hand in being denied, even in that low block position. Pass to Chris Schroeder outside the three. Eventually ends up in the hands of Northcroft. Lov pass to Hunt is knocked away. Looks like it'll stay with the Hounds. And it will stay with the Hounds. Northcroft inbounds it again. Shot clock and nine seconds. Lowe's doing a pretty good do job of containing uh, Hunt so far in this game. Being able to get, get those away, but that pass just good enough. And he's fouled. No shot, but he will draw a foul. Another foul by number 11, Jack Florence. Yeah, foul called on Florence. His second of the game, not on Wells, the man guarding him, is the first shot for Tiny is no good. And Cade Rogers comes back in for Chris Schroeder. Yeah, Chris Schroeder getting a couple minutes there. Haven't seen much from him, and he will head back to the bench. Rogers getting back in the game, still at four, as Hunt sinks his second one, putting the Hounds within two. Their lowest deficit in quite a while. Coiner hands the ball off to Goldsmith. Florence trying to drive, no success. Freeman doing a really good job swinging the ball. Wells gets an open look, but it doesn't go. Rebound received from the Scotties. Another offensive rebound. Florence looked like driving to the baseline, able to step back, but can't quite finish the shot, just short. Good drive there from Florence, able to get an open look, but can't quite finish it. And the Hounds will stay within two. Pawaki at the top of the key. Wells now guarding Pawaki, trying to make a move, can't quite finish it. Pawaki trying to hit a lot of those side steps, Euro step type moves, hitting one of them, but overall, otherwise having little success. Jump ball called. Ball will stay with the Hounds. North Cop inbounds it. Hounds in a sort of line formation. Looks like the play's designed for Hunt, but he's not open. Eventually, take the back up to Rogers. Ball swung to Pawaki. Breaks the three. But Kwan's able to get an and one. Nice shot there from the outside. Little mid-ranger pulls up, able to get that second effort. Another big example of those offensive rebounds. Possible chance to take the lead here. Quan, a great shooter, has a great chance of hitting this free throw and putting the Hounds in front for the first time in a while. Pawak Gavin Brown comes in for Champ Pawaki. Yeah, Pawaki checks out for the first time in this game. Quan just off. And a violation. Yeah, lane violation called on Austin Hunt. So Scotty's will get the ball no matter what here. Hodges takes the ball up. Seen a few guys taking the ball up for Freeman. Hodges takes it up this time, driving to the left side, kind of sitting on the outside of the three-point line, looking for a pass. Northcroft doing a really good job, but eventually gets it out to Wells, who takes a deep three, which is no good. Three-pointers not going well for either team, really, this game so far. Neither team has hit a three-pointer. A lot of attempts, but nothing really dropping from deep. Rogers taking it to the top, trying to reset the play here. Gavin Brown coming off a screen, goes back to Rogers, who looks for a mid-ranger from the corner. No good. Hunt able to get the rebound, however, and passes it off to Northcroft to get to finish. Push called. That's called number 33. Looks like Hunt, as you saw in the replay, pretty obvious push there. 
and points are still on the board. Alex Bigoff goes over to the scores table to check into the game. But He'll most likely go in for Austin Hunt. Instead, the Scotties will be shooting Fawn Wells. And the Scotties are already into bonus, only halfway through this quarter. Big mistakes from the Hounds. They already have five fouls and four minutes left. And Bigoff does go in for Austin Hunt. Going to be very important as any fouls beyond now are going to also resort in free throws. And if people like Wells are able to make both, it's going to end up hurting the Hounds for getting to five fouls so early with the Scotties currently sitting at three in the quarter. Game tied up. Looks like a game with such little fouls uh, turning into a quite a heavy one. And another one's called. This one's on Micah Hodge. Yeah, and Freeman already at four fouls, looking close to getting Pullman in bonus. Juan has a quick open shot in the three, doesn't take it, and Esten gives a bad pass to Bicklehop. Ball's eventually rebounded and taken all the way back in transition by Goldsmith, and he will lay down a dunk and put Freeman back in the lead, up by two, 23-21. Rogers trying to get around some defenders. Eventually decides to hand it off. Gavin Brown open on the other side of the court. No good. Had about the whole side of the court to himself, but not able to finish. Goldsmith goes for another dunk, gets rejected. And Hodges puts one up for three and also doesn't fall. The ball will stay with the... Scotties. Yeah, look to have been tipped out maybe by Gavin Brown. Anyhow, it'll stay with the Scotties on and offense. And then Anderson comes in for Daniel Kwan. He gets his first minutes of the game. Yeah, Evan Anderson, another guy we haven't seen produce very much, hasn't had much of an opportunity. Wells, no good. Second opportunity from Goldsmith also doesn't fall, and the Hounds will be back with the ball. Northcroft trying to spin off. Charge and an offensive called. foul is called. They're saying the defender was set. And foul's gonna be called on Northcroft. No shot, even though he did not make the shot. Or sorry, pardon me, did finish. It's not gonna count. Northcroft picks up his finger foul of the game. Yeah, first foul of the game being an off or second foul of the game being an offensive. Just under three minutes left to go in this game. Hodges passes to Wells. Similar offensive we've seen from Freeman trying to move the ball around, but this time a travel is called. Goldsmith didn't get the ball down fast enough. And that'll be the first travel from the Scotties. Not nearly as many as the Hounds, although they have cleaned it up in the second quarter, at least in terms of travels. Missed pass, Evan Anderson can't quite hold on to it. Goldsmith's gonna get another transition bucket, this time with a nice layup on the right side. Four point lead now for the Scotties. Hounds need to prevent these turnovers and nearly another one there is Rogers tries to pass it all the way down to the post to Picklehop, but it's knocked away. Not enough of an arc on it. It's able to be easily intercepted. Hounds have to end down the ball now. End up just giving it back to Rogers at the top. Anderson Swings it to Northcroft. Again to Gavin Brown on the opposite side of the court. This time he doesn't put it up. Anderson dumps it off to Bicklehop. Shot like a five. Rogers decides to take it. Just over, still no three-pointers in this game. And Rogers is able to make a good heads-up play there. Pass intercepted on the way to Hodges, able to turn around and just get a hand out and at least stop that transition. Wells looking to pass. Wells and Hodges getting the majority of the ball sitting on the outside. Hodges just pulls up with a desperate free and it's deep and it goes in. Probably the lowest percentage shot of all the threes taken is the one that drops and it looks very nice for Hodges. And he gets the ball rolling from deep with just under two minutes left in the half. 
Gives his team a seven Rogers has a wide open three of his own, fakes a man, and just can't quite finish, unfortunate. And the Scotties now sit at a seven point lead, pretty commanding, coming to the end of this half just like that. That one three kind of separated these two teams. Wells getting to try to get a finish. Can't quite do so and ends up getting called for a foul there, falling on pickle hop. That's Colton Wells. Foul called on. And that does put the Hounds in bonus, so Bickle Hop will go to the line, shooting two here. Both teams now at five fouls apiece. Look for his first points of the game. He'll shoot two. First one won't fall. Very turnover ridden game so far. Hounds need to eliminate the turnovers if they want to stay in this game. Second one is pounded. Hounds claw back within six with that free throw from Bickle Hop. Freeman quickly moving the ball around. Good ball movement. Able to get the Hounds defense kind of off guard. Hodges fakes a three, ends up driving to the inside, gets called for a foul, but does not finish the shot, so he will be shooting but no and one for Hodges. Foul is called on Cade Rogers. That's gonna be his second of the game. He joins Caleb Northcroft. In the two foul club. Hodges able to secure the first free throw. bring the Scotties back up to the highest lead they've had this game and looking to break that here get up to eight and hit that 30 point threshold in only the first half no rebound from Bicklehop Hodges able to get his own rebound but ends up falling out of bounds and luckily the Hounds will be able to secure the ball with under 45 seconds left Hounds not playing their greatest. Scotties have eight turnovers. Bicklehop gets a quick pass to Rogers. Nice eye from Bicklehop to be able to spot Rogers on that other side, very wide open, and able to finish that layup. Put the Hounds just within five. And a self-inflicted out of bounds from the Scotties. Two of the players kind of fighting for it. Goldsmith and Florence both trying to grab at that ball and they eventually squeeze it out of bounds. And the Hounds will have a chance to bring this game even closer just at the end of the half. Get some momentum going into the locker room. Ball bounces out, weird turn of events. However, Northcroft's able to secure the ball. Ball bounces all the way back to the other side. Has about five seconds, tries to finish, no good. Anderson tries to pull up and no shots called but they are in bonus, he will get two shots. Yeah, penalty is called on the floor, but since it's in bonus, it doesn't matter. Still two shots for Evan Anderson. That foul is on number 32, Finn LaPointe. Yeah, was able to draw a foul there. First one falls. Chris Schroeder comes in with a minute, with a second left, comes in for Cade Rogers. And so does Cade Hill for Kevin Northcroft. Yeah, just one second left this game. Most likely nothing to come from this after this. See if Anderson can put him within one possession. Can't quite do it. And Scotties will go into the locker room with a four point lead up against the Hounds. Hounds having a little bit of a shaky first half. See if they can get back into this game. Uh, but as it stands right now, Freeman securing that lead going to the half. 29 25, the final for this first half, and we'll see if both these teams can make some adjustments when it comes to turnovers. And we'll see you in the second half.
competition and what are you expecting uh, when you travel to Illinois? Well, it's a pretty big competition. It's like the biggest one I go to each year and yeah, the goal is just to like race a ton of like really fast people and try to see how high I can place. Competition level, this is like the fastest swim meet for 18 and under in the United States and there's four different junior nationals around the United States and typically there's like 800 swimmers that have to, you have to qualify to get into the meet. So I'm swimming the 200 I am, the, uh, the, the 400 I am, 100 back, and the 200 back. I'm doing four events. It'll be the 500 free, the 200 free, the 200 fly, and the 100 free. I got the time cuts for this like throughout the year racing at past competitions. Typically my big races are the 100 back and the 100 free and 50 free and big meets that I've kind of gone to that have kind of prepared me for this high level meet and the juniors is also the highest level meet I've qualified for. Our state last year I got second in the 100 back for 4A at my old school in Nachi. Going to state was a little bit more trickier trying to get into those top A finals and top, maybe even winning state just because there's a lot more, it's a lot more competitive in 4A but also 2A is typically the top three swimmers for each event is super fast for state so I think swimming with Jake and Will is really pushing me to. We've been training a lot, I mean as, as hard or harder than we ever have and just it's it's been really great training and having having Ben to come and train with us it was it's awesome to have him at practice. High school high school swimming is so much fun. It's it's a lot different from club swimming just because you go to you go to more meets and it's an all guys team which is a, a completely different atmosphere for better or for worse. One of our main coaches left. We've had some coaching changes, but we go we all get along like really well and it's really fun. The kids on the team are very welcoming and the coach Jacob, he's been basically, I feel like I've known him for forever and it's only been a couple of weeks, which has been awesome. To some extent, who cares how fast you are, if you're having fun, you're going to swim fast.
Goldsmith and finding that shot. Scotties extend their lead to six. Good ball movement from the Hounds. Haven't seen that very often. And fouls called. Looks like some pushing and shoving down low. Fouls called off the ball. Eventually it's on Florence. Hounds will keep the ball. Lob pass to Hunt, able to grab it, but can't quite finish. Coiner gets past Brown, but can't quite finish that shot either. Rebound Pawaki brings up the court. Pass intercepted from Pawaki to Rogers in the corner. Came with both hands on it. Ball stays with the Greyhounds. Coiner kind of coming out of nowhere in transition. Luckily, didn't get a good grip on it. Eventually, inbounds to Rogers over the top. Ball moves back to Rogers. Hounds trying to move the ball a lot more. Ends up in a good look from Pawaki, and he's able to put it in. Those are the Greyhounds' first points of this half. Yeah, good movement from the Hounds. Obviously a clear difference from what we saw in the first half. See if they'll continue to do that and get more open looks and be more patient. Hunt battling with Florence down in the post. Hunt gets a big block. In transition, Gavin Brown. Attempted block there from Wells, but Brown doesn't suffer the same fate as Coiner. Incredible And is layup. able to finish in transition. Really tight layup there, yeah, as you said from Brown, uh, but he's able to, able to put it in as he should. Hodges kind of slips up there. And a penalty is, foul is called on Rogers. That'll be his third. He has the highest in the game. And he's gonna get subbed out right away after that third penalty. Just a minute and 40 in the game, and he'll be out again. Interesting how they're playing Rodgers, kind of giving him minimal time. Quan almost able to grab that ball. Puts New substitute. Shot from Goldsmith is no good. Three won't fall. Fast pace for the Hounds here. Saw a couple threes fall at the end of the first half. Here's one from Champ. And, and that, that one, one will fall. And that'll put the Hounds in the lead. Timeout called by the Scotties as Greyhounds take the first lead of the half, 32-31. Yeah, Fre Freeman uh, kind of struggling there. Pullman doing exactly what we wanted to see from them. Able to bounce back really well from that tough first half. Having a couple in transition points. One from Brown that was a really good layup. And then that three finally falling for the Hounds with Pawaki. A lot of things going right compared to the first half. If these things can keep going right in the Hounds' favor, they might be able to gap the Scotties, but definitely Scotties doing everything in their power to limit that and stop this momentum from the Hounds. The Hounds are proud of the half with all the momentum in this game. Hounds will take their first lead since the first quarter. Scotties have led for over 10 minutes and are now back behind the Hounds. Scotty's ball. Nash McLean subs into the game. Eventually passes into Finn LaPointe. His name we haven't seen a lot, him coming off the bench. Scotty's again just trying to move the ball around, get an open look. Screens being set. LaPointe ends up with the ball, decides not to shoot it. Shot by down to five. Shot up. Does shot take short. a shot there. Milwaukee takes it down the court, tries to make a move on the point, gets him missing, able to get an opportunity for Brown, wasn't able to score it. His defender had to come help, but he couldn't quite finish the three. Shot was in and out. Scotty's now have the ball. Good steal from Gavin Brown, heads up play. He struggles to control the ball, still tries to go up, can't quite finish it, missed opportunity there. Could have had a transition layup like he did before, and he's obviously frustrated. Just couldn't quite hold on to the ball, but great heads up play to at least steal the ball. And it will be the Hounds possession. At a very minimum, at least got a turnover, and the Hounds have a chance to score here. And extend that lead from just one point. Pass goes to 
Pawaki on the outside eventually drives towards the middle, goes up, is held at the top of his jump, and is called against the point for that penalty. That's his third foul of the game. Yeah, kind of pushed him at the peak of his shot, couldn't get a shot off. And in result, he will get to shoot free throws, of which the first he... He'll be coming out of the game with three fouls. In. Yeah, LaPointe had a chance and didn't do much with it, and now will be subbed out. Zem checking into the game for him. And Pawaki's good for both free throws, extending the Hounds' lead to three. McLean gets shoved by Kwan. No foul called. Eventually just loses control of the ball based on that push by Kwan. No foul. Coaches are obviously frustrated on the Scotty side of the ball, but the Hounds will be able to get it. Up three. Coiner tries to steal the ball there, gets beat. Nice fake by Quan would have been blocked, but eventually instead passing to Hunt, who can't finish again. Again, having trouble finishing. A common mistake we've seen uh, in that previous game against Houston is continuing. Thought it would have changed with that first shot he was able to make, uh, but having quite a few. And he'll get subbed out, looked kind of dejected there and replaced by Bicklehop, number five, who picks up his man as the Scotties take it down the court. Goldsmith, the big man, taking it down. Hodges faking. Scotty's doing a good job moving the ball around, not getting any open looks so far. Clock goes under 10, hits five. Goldsmith gets faked, or gets Quan to move, rather, and gets a foul called. Yeah, and that's gonna go on Daniel Kwan, the man defending him. Jumped and tried to catch up and gets caught with a foul. That'll be his second of the game. Although, Wells not able to take advantage of it so far. Missing that first free throw. But able to join the second one. Cuts the lead of the house up too. Game has become much more defensive. Not a lot of points scored so far in the second half. Most of which have been scored by the Hounds. Ball passed too hard for Northcroft to handle here. It's slapping off of his hands. And Scotty's trying to make a quick transition, but Walkie takes it right back, makes a nice move, and a block is called. Defender wasn't able to get set. And Scotty's at 10 turnovers on this game. And it was on the shot, so he will be shooting. Blocky three for three on his free throws so far. All of them coming in the second half. Puts him up to 12 and six in this first half alone. Now seven, seven of 11 points for the Hounds so far. Doing a really good job in the second half. He sits at 13, the leading scorer on the night. Already approaching a season high. Ball ends up in the hands of Wells. Scotty's really trying to move it around. Coleman doing a good job of not giving them any open opportunities, not really doing much to the ball. Desperate shot by Hodges with a few seconds on the clock is no good. Brown will get a chance in transition, tries to make a move and do it himself, but can't quite get a shot up. And he gets an offensive called on him. He's felt hard. Yeah, as you said, fell hard, but eventually able to get up. Offensive call on him, he looks kind of confused. But definitely the right call there. Defender Wells did a really good job of getting set in transition, having time to get back while still not getting called for the block there. Really good job. Zem passes, kind of a weird angle for Wells to try to recover, but a foul is still called, a little pushing. And it is called on Quan. 
pushing from the back there, trying to make sure he can't receive that ball and ends up getting caught. With his third penalty of the game, and because of that, Brandner looks to put a new man in for him, and he will go out along with Brown. Anderson and Hecker go in the game. Hecker checking in for his first time of the game. Also, a guy kind of playing bench, getting limited minutes, see if he can make an impact here. And another penalty on White. Interesting call, not really a blue man it looked like in the area. And it looks like penalty will be called on the new man, Hecker. Kind of a strange call, looks like. Yeah, although this there wasn't really anyone in the area. Looks like they're calling a foul on each other. A greyhound foul to Greyhound. So that'll end up putting them in bonus, that on the ground foul off the rebound, and they still get a shot. Second time Freeman has been in bonus this game. Both of them leading to points on fouls that would otherwise not even be shooting for. And Goldsmith's able to nail both of those and put the Scotties back within one. Coleman still barely holding on to this lead. Anderson getting double teamed. F Scotty's trying to run a little bit of a trap defense here. Pawlocki able to get off a shot, but his shot is short, no good. A little bit of a wasted possession there. Scotty's played extra aggressive defense and rewarded. Goldsmith swings it to Wells. Drives, fakes. Eventually ends up on the inside to Zem, but a travel is called before Zem can get rid of the ball. 12th turnover for the Scotties. Yeah, not doing a good job being careful there. Press is getting showed from Freeman. Definitely being more aggressive with one point deficit in this game. We saw that trap defense and now it's evolved to a full court press. Hecker's barely able to retrieve the ball, hands it back off to Northcroft, who's taking it from the top. Ball goes to Wells, able to throw it off of Northcroft, did a really good job, really athletic play. Jumps and able to chuck it off the shins of Northcroft and bounces right out. Greyhound Great. so barely holding on to the lead by one. Great heads up play there from Goldsmith, or Wells, pardon me. Wells driving, tries to put up a shot with his left hand, can't quite get there. Good defense from Bicklehop, able to stand up in the middle of the paint there. And too much distance for Wells to travel. As Milwaukee's fouled pretty hard. Wells goes for a block, but you can hear the slap of skin there. And obvious, easy foul for the referees to call. Milwaukee will be shooting again. His third time shooting this half. And is still good, five for five now. He's doing a really good job of taking advantage of these Freeman fouls. Both teams now in bonus with a minute and a half to play in this quarter. That was a shooting foul anyway, but keep it in mind. And Champ goes six for six. That's Chris really Schroeder. good job. Chris Schroeder comes in for Champ Milwaukee. Kind of an odd substitution. Pawaki seeing at nine from the field and the six points coming from those free throws, now up to 15. Tacking two on there off of that foul from Wells. Goldsmith gets a quick opportunity to corner in the corner, but he can't make it. Foul is called. Coiner in the corner. And that's on Kevin Northcroft. That's his third foul of the game. Another guy in foul trouble. He joins Quan with three. As he's asking for the official for an explanation on the foul call. He seems to understand it. And Goldsmith back at the line. He makes his first. Battle with the free throws right now. A lot of points coming from free throws for both teams. And he makes both of his. Matching Pawaki. Press break. Hecker able to cross it down the middle to Bicklehop. Lead back at one. Schroeder in the corner, able to beat his man, tries to go up, but is blocked. It's up an awkward shot. 
Yeah. Jump ball was called. Yeah, almost tried to go for a fake and hit a second effort, but the second effort actually made him too slow and caused him to be blocked by LaPointe, who gets his second chance of the game. Schroeder able to beat his man. Ball will stay with the Hounds. Just under a minute left to play in the third quarter. Hounds still maintaining that one point lead. Ball deflected, but ends up in the hands of Hecker. Ball to 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Not much time, nothing really going so far as this offense. Gonna have to put up a quick shot, which Northcroft does, and it does fall. Nice shot from the free throw line. Able to hit a nice jumper. Puts the Hounds up by three now. Get good air and have an open look there. Able to put it in. Hodges with a deep three. Saw him hit one of those from a similar position. Can't put it in there. And the Hounds will look to take the last possession of this game. Shot clock just out counting the actual time on the clock. And Northcroft will most likely bring it down to around 10 seconds before trying to run a play. Timeout call by Coach Brandner. Brandner looking to get everything he can out of this quarter, try to get up by multiple possessions. And he's gonna draw up a play for his team with just 12 seconds to go. Hounds still doing a good job maintaining, not really extending their lead, having trouble uh, scoring outside of those uh, clutch free throws from Pewaukee. He's going six for six just in this quarter. What player are you looking for for the Hounds to play here? Yeah. Game a very foul dependent. Both teams already in bonus. As Florence checks in for Scotties. At this point, more of a battle of kind of who can mess themselves up. Uh, and who can avoid fouls is gonna probably be able to make the difference in the final quarter of this game. Whoever's gonna be able to play a cleaner game of basketball looks to be the key difference between these two teams as both of them are struggling right now. Especially as we move later into this game. Guys are getting tired and starting to make more mistakes. Northcroft trying to get an open pass. Three seconds left, deep pass to Anderson. Quick swing on the inside to Bickelhoff. Really good shot by him, contested. He's able to finish it, and Hounds are able to get up by five. Great quarter from the Hounds there, able to get everything they could out of that. Yeah, good, good find by Anderson to find Bickelhoff wide open. Yeah, unselfish play there by Anderson. Could have possibly had a shot there with a couple seconds and had the discipline to pass that ball off to Bickelhoff. And Hounds end up up five in a good position compared to where they were, gaining nine points on the Scotties, starting down four at the beginning of this second half. Seems like a new starting five come in for the Hounds as Gavin Brown and Pawaki check back in. As long side Kate Rogers. Gavin Brown, as you know, a very emotional player. Hopefully uh, he can have a good impact like he did in that fourth quarter of that last game and that comeback against Houston had that clutch three and two clutch uh, free throws. Hopefully he can come in clutch later in this game. Hasn't had that big of an impact, currently sitting at four points. Entire new five for the Hounds besides Northcroft for the beginning of this fourth quarter. Continue to see if Champ Milwaukee can extend uh, his dominant performance, already sitting a season high with 15 points here and leading the team by quite a wide margin. Scotty's yet again trying to move the ball around outside the perimeter. Ball nearly taken away, but Wells able to hold on. And Hodges able to get around big man Hunt and put in, sneak in a layup there from the right hand. Nice little finger roll. Brown able to get a quick shot. Charge is called. Yeah, Florence definitely set there. Been set for a while. Unlucky Brown didn't really even realize he was there. Turned right into him and gets up kind of a half of a shot. Quan checks in for Brown as Brown puts up his third foul of the game.
Interesting, all guys on the floor right now have three fouls. So everyone kind of in trouble here. Got it, but Rantner has to play this game right if he wants to keep his guys uh, out of foul trouble. Pass to Hunt, lobbed in from Northcroft. Wells comes from behind, able to smack it out of bounds, but it definitely will go in favor of the Hounds. And they'll get the inbound. Northcroft taking it as usual. Quick pass on the inside to Quan, not quite able to finish, just over, shot that. Wells passes across court to the corner. Hodges from three right up the middle, no good. Tough rebound here, ball still on the ground, everyone fumbling for it. Northcroft able to jump on it and it's gonna be called a jump ball. Big struggle there and the Hounds are gonna be able to get possession from that jump ball. Freeman guys seem to be annoyed, it looked like they had possession. However, they were on the ground and Northcroft was smart and able to put some hands on it and get a jump ball called. Four court press again from the Scotties. Hounds able to break it with a little, little difficulty. Yet another lob from Northcroft to Hunt. And yet again, not quite able to finish, just rolling out. Hunt clearly disappointed. Pointer in the corner, Joel's out to the center court. Him and Hodges trade back and forth with the ball. Still moving around the outside, clock goes under 10. Open look, no good from Goldsmith. And second effort is good. Wells just there to go to read down that ball. Another second effort. Seen Pullman do a better job of limiting those, uh, but it came back right there. And Freemans were able to do one of the things they do best. Wells tries to get a block there prematurely. And Hunt has an easy finish and is finally able to get some more points. That'll put him at five with that, two layups and a free throw. It puts the Hounds back up by three. Three from Hodges to tie is no good. Second effort and rebound. Hunt's able to block Hodges clean. No penalty. Rogers kind of stuck in the press getting double teamed but able to get it out to Northcroft. And a foul is called on Hodges. Light push, and it gets called. That's gonna be his second personal. Neither team's really close uh, to putting the other in bonus. Both teams sitting at one foul now on the board. Northcroft and Rogers trading off. Ends up back in the hands of Northcroft. Swings it to Pawaki, who fakes and tries to go under, but no success. Over the back foul by Hunt on the rebound. They go off with check in. Yeah, for hard him. not to get something like that and over the back when you're 6 9. Very true. I see his four fouls. Checks out of the game. Yeah, unfortunate. He will be missing the center of the court. Big Gohopt is back in the game. Ball quickly swung between three guys. Coiner Taj is swung all the way around and back, eventually looking into the middle, but not, will not go. And Rogers will be able to take it away. He's doing a good job defensively in this game so far. Bickelhoff not able to get a hold of that ball. And an over and back will be called as it gets kind of shot to the other side of the court and Northcroft recovers it. Uh, but knows it'll be a penalty. Looks to me like Bick wasn't ready for the ball. It's kind of surprised how the ball was passed to him. Yeah, got a hand on it, but kind of just hit it away instead of being able to reel that one in. Quan checks out of the game. And Brown will take his place. Ball's passing Hodges. Freeman still trying to work around. Just waiting for a chance to finish on the inside. Hodges gets that chance but can't finish. And eventually Rodgers is going to tip it out of bounds. And the Scotties will stay with the ball. Though the shot clock will not reset. As a shot from Hodges did not touch the rim. Good effort there for him to save it. We stayed at this three-point lead. Yeah. Seems like for a while now. Scotty's honestly 
I think they're becoming pretty predictable here, just kind of swinging around the outside, looking for something in the inside, but any time they pass the inside, it leads to a lot of turnovers and tough fights under the hoop. Um, and Hounds are getting pretty used to it. Scotties might need to go to a different attack or a different style of offense as this kind of ball movement, although it can be effective, uh, it's kind of being overused by the Scotties. And isn't very effective right now as this game has become much more low scoring. Scotty's only scoring 12 in the half so far in the past 12 minutes, much lower than the 29 they were able to get in the first half. On track to score about 16. Zem pops it out to McLean. Shot clock expires in a deep three from Goldsmith. What a shot, multiple feet behind the line. And he just throws one up and it goes in. The two threes we've seen from Freeman have been desperate attempts and they've both gone. This game is now tied at 44. Big shot for Freeman, kind of what they needed. And this game is knotted late in this game. Bicklehop tries to post up to the inside, no good. Jumper doesn't fall. Hodges hits a three, two threes in a row. And all of a sudden, Freeman has taken the lead back. That's their first lead of this quarter. Only led once in the half. Bar Pawaki. He makes Pawaki the move. fakes, tries to get a finish. Multiple guys on him. Ends up getting blocked, kind of smothered there. Possibly could have looked for a guy on the outside, but decides to try the finish. Doesn't work out for him. That's a situation where you got to realize that based on how many guys there are on you, you just got to take the chance and look for a guy to swing it out to and possibly match this game with a three. Momentum is all in Scotty's favor right now. Goldsmith. Travel is called. Pass it to Hodges and yeah, doesn't put the ball down in time. Happened a couple times to Hodges, just not putting the ball down and the refs have been strict about it. As you see that three there that he made, second of two deep threes, both for him and in a row for the team. Brown passes it straight into the hands of Wells. Nothing doing there. And a foul is called. On Brown. Calls a trip as Hodges stumbled coming down the court. That'll be his third, he'll pick that up. Tiny looks to sub in before the out for the inbounds play. He goes in her bickle off. Two minutes and 41 seconds remain in this game and Scotties are up by three. Hunt now playing with four fouls, just under three minutes left in this game. Hounds down by one possession. Very similar score line to what we saw in that Lewiston game. See what the Hounds can do. Hodges falls to his feet, kind of self-inflicted there. No trip called this time. And that'll be called for a travel. And so the Hounds will get the ball back. Just under 2.30. Down by three. Kwan goes to inbound the ball. The Hounds need to answer back. This half has not been great for neither offense so far. And it's gonna be really hard to get an opportunity as both these defenses playing really well, especially in the second half. Rogers swings it cross court to Northcroft. Pass a little high, he's not able to get an opportunity. Swings it back to Rogers. Pawaki gets an offensive foul called on him. Hodges is able to take the charge. Didn't look to be set, but the charge is called. Yeah, in the end, Scotty's gonna end up with the ball here. That takes them away a Chance position. Chance to extend their lead and make this game a whole lot more difficult for the Hounds. Goldsmith swings it to McLean. Clock goes under two minutes. Ball movement that we've seen from Freeman. And that's going to be a travel, yeah. He did not land on two feet. Took a little one-two, and that's going to be a travel called on him. He's going to give up the ball. Two fouls called, one on each team. Hounds now have four fouls 
uh, in the in the quarter could possibly be trouble if they get down to lower time. Not going to be able to foul, or going to be able to foul, but it's going to give them free throws. The Scotties. Hunt open in the middle, but doesn't take the shot. Pawaki trying to make a move, still going. Goes to the inside and gets the end one. Nice shot from Pawaki, able to spin around his guy and get the foul called and put the bucket in. Ball kind of spun around the rim. And Pawaki, who's gone six for six on free throws, looking to tie this game up in a crucial point. Collins Dowd by one, looking to tie this game would be huge if he can sink this. And he is able to make it. Now goes seven for seven. Whistle blows, Freeman calls a timeout. Ball's gonna be taken in on the right side of the court and both these teams will talk over what they want to do in the final minutes. Very tight game. Yeah, back to that play by Milwaukee, very smart moves to have a little spin move to avoid having a charge called in him because he does have four fouls. Another foul would have him be fouled out of the game, which is going to happen. Yeah, very crucial that Milwaukee does not get fouled out of the game. Good, done a good job in this quarter, uh, staying out of foul trouble, well, being in foul trouble and still surviving. And he's been very clutch. Every free throw that he's made is now looked upon as way more important. Being able to make all seven of those free throws is coming in clutch for the Hounds right now as they sit in a tied situation. Second close game in a row at home for the Hounds. See if they can pull out another one. But it will be Scotty's ball with just eight seconds taking off the shot clock. Still have plenty of time here to get a play running. Ball is taken. Steps over the line, but ref says he got possession over the line, so it wasn't called as an over and back. Goldsmith fakes a shot, ends up with the ball again. Shot is way off the mark from Zem. Recess the shot clock. But very good offensive rebound from Coiner. And yes, as you said, Shotcoff's able to be reset. Hounds will be left with 40 seconds. Clock is under a minute. Mid-ranger is no good, goes over the backboard. Great situation for the Hounds as they're gonna get the ball for free. No chance of getting an offensive rebound, which we just saw that shot being a second chance. Jack Florence After. comes in for Micah Hodges. And Daniel Kwan comes in for Gavin Brown. Last minute subs for what could possibly be the last position of the game for both of these teams. As this game is coming down to the wire. Scotty's most likely going to have a chance after this Hounds possession. See if the Hounds can put themselves in the driver's seat with a, with a goal right here. Milwaukee being guarded tightly, backing up near to the half court line, using a lot of time on the shot clock, could end up biting them. Pawaki fumbles with the ball. Hunt has a chance to post up, able to finish. His third finish of the night, and he does it when it matters. Hounds are up by two. Wells passes it in to Zem, but is rejected. Pawaki has the ball. And he's fouled. And a great, great final 30 seconds played by Hunt. He's able to finish on Wells in a clutch situation where he's had trouble and not let that get to him and put the ball in the, in the basket while it matters. And a great block, perfectly clean. And now the Hounds have the ball up two with just eight seconds to go. Have a great chance to finish out this game. Hounds on bonus, so they will get the ball in inbounds. Timeout Greyhounds. Greyhounds cannot afford turning the ball over on this inbound. Yeah, it's very important that they at least get the ball into a pass. And a foul would have them shoot free throws. No chance 
of a 10 second violation. Foul doesn't really do any good for Freeman as there's only eight seconds left, not enough time to get the value out of that as they'll put them all the way on the other side of the court. So if you're Freeman, you just have to play really great defense and hope that you get a chance uh, to steal the ball without fouling as they can stay wherever they want for these last eight seconds and just hold the ball and essentially run this clock all the way down. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, can't stress enough how huge that shot is from Austin Hunt to put them in the driver's seat and make Freeman be in a stress situation. And, and then this block on the other side of the court was pretty impressive as well. North Crawford went down the ball. As expected, Pawaki and Rogers both tightly guarded. Hunt runs up, tries to get the ball. Northcroft chucks the ball deep and a foul is called. Wow, kind of a strange pass. He just threw it up. Yeah, able to not really run very much time off the clock. And that's going to put Freeman at four fouls. So no bonus. It looks like. Refs are kind of deliberating here as to whether it is bonus. Possible miss, miss scoreboard. And they say it won't be in bonus. Error, but yeah, they've got it cleared up. And so the Hounds will have the ball only running 0.6 seconds off this clock in that last inbound. Sounds like what we're hearing is the foul was before the touch. And so this may impact where the ball is placed. Hounds may have to go back to the Freeman side of the court. Brantner kind of trying to figure it out with the refs. Brantner's arguing that he caught it, or at least put a hand on it. As I if, thought he did have a hand on it. Yeah, if, if he did. But what matters is when the foul was called. And it looked like there was some pure contact. This feels like a football call. Pure contact before the ball was thrown. It's like a pass interference. 15-yard penalty. It looks like might not be enforced. And the Hounds might have to take it out from the same spot. So they call another timeout. And Brandner gets another chance to talk with his team. Both of these teams looking... I do not want to see another deep pass from Rothkopf. Yeah, interesting pass. It looked like Brandner uh, kind of wanted anything but that foul to happen. If that didn't happen, that would have been a good idea to at least get the ball on that side of the court and make Freeman have to take it all the way down. But Austin, the foul ended up benefiting Freeman, if anything. Austin, he's the ball out of Austin Hunt's hands as he is the worst position shooter on the team. It looks like from where the refs are holding the ball, it will actually be taken out on the Pullman side of the court. So. And indeed so. The refs eventually side with Brandner here. And Rogers will have the crucial job of inbounding the ball here. A tough situation, pass to Pawaki, and a foul is called on McLean. And that's gonna be really unfortunate. Probably the right call. Freeman essentially banking on Pawaki, the seven for seven free throw shooter to miss one of these free throws. And that's about the worst guy to foul if you're the Scotties here. See what he can do. And he does miss his first free throw of the game. Now it comes down to if Freeman can get a rebound Freeman's made a pretty good situation for themselves here. If they are able to get a rebound, as number ti another timeout's called. Freeman's going to talk about if what happens. <laughs> excuse me, if they're going to come down with this rebound, uh, what the play is going to be because they have just over seven seconds left. So if Milwaukee hits his free throw, that basically guarantees that Freeman can't take the lead unless they got fouled on a three-pointer. Yeah, this free throw for Pawaki is still very important. Uh, even though Freeman most likely will end up with a little bit of a possession here and possibly a chance uh, to score the ball. If Pawaki is able to drain this free throw, it sets Pullman up to a really good position. Uh, this almost feels exactly like the Moss or the Houston game. 
with that three that was made by Wusin. But if Pawaki can put it in, it'll at least send them to overtime. Worst case scenario for the Hounds. Pawaki to shoot his ninth free throw of the game. And he's able to sink it. Freeman has to go right away. Five seconds on the clock. Gonna see if they can get an open shot on the perimeter. They do, and it goes in. Time expires. What a shot from Finwell Point from the corner. Clutch shot ties it up 50 to 50, and we're going to overtime, folks. Just like the Lewiston game, except not enough time for a buzzer beater. The buzzer beater comes from Freeman this time. And we're going to go into overtime for the first time in the Hound season, either of these team seasons. And that proves how crucial that free throw was by Pawaki to make that last one. Yeah, very unfamiliar territory for both of these teams. Haven't had an overtime game in a while. Game tied up at 50-50, to 50, another intense game just two days after. That insane game against Lewiston. Kind Ref of the same story. Four minutes will be put on the clock for this overtime. And Hounds cannot lose motivation just because they've been sent into overtime. Nothing they could have really controlled there. As it was a great shot. Yeah, LaPointe had a really great contested shot there. And they have to shake that off and realize that they still have four minutes to play and that they're not out of this game. They can still win. And they will start with the ball, it appears. They will switch directions. Or it's gonna, sorry, it's gonna be a tip. What a shot from a point there to tie that game up. Very impressive. Last final seconds, very well played from Freeman. Wells wins the tip. Wins the tip. Step out of bounds. And looks like, yeah, Hold referee ball. signaled incorrectly. It is Hound's ball. Bounced off of LaPointe. The guy who hit the three. A little confusion. Yeah, a little argument. Brantner thinks that Freeman won the toss and lost possession. Referee saying differently, and it looks like the possession arrow will go to Freeman. Brander doesn't have his way with that one. Pawaki dumps it into Hunt. Hunt not able to finish. That's the board. Barely able to stay out of bounds, but pass gets intercepted by Wells. Goldsmith now taking the ball down the court, just passes half. Hands the ball off to Wells. Different play design that we've seen, more of a standard play design, but it doesn't go well. Northcroft gets tripped up, no foul called, open three for Wells, decides to drive in instead, able to get around two defenders and score a really nice bucket. Interesting no call from Northcroft, I guess he didn't really have possession there, kind of fell over his own feet. Bucky is at four fouls. Yeah, that becomes a lot more important now that we've extended the time in this game. So is Hunt. Bucky hands it off to Hunt. Back to Pass looked extended to Rogers, but Pawaxi takes Pawaxi takes it. No foul called again. Tries to put up a desperate shot, but can't quite get the angle on it. And it will be Freeman ball up by two. Coiner and Hodges kind of trading back and forth here, looking for an opportunity. Screen is set. Goldsmith comes up to the top, shoots a mid ranger. Foul called. Foul called. Looks like on Northcroft. Northcroft. That's his. That'll be his foul. four. So three guys sending up four fouls. Really dangerous territory for the Hounds right now. Northcroft, Pawaki, and Hunt all four fouls. Yeah, trying to get that rebound, kind of reaching around that left side of Goldsmith. And really bad as both teams stay in bonus from that fourth quarter. Free throw is missed by Goldsmith. So at the very worst for the Hounds, Freeman will be up by three points.
and it will be three. Three point game. Northcroft, Northcroft getting kind of double teamed there. Ends up back with him at the center. Pawkey swings it across to Rogers. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Five. Northcroft going for a desperate shot. Gets North shoved. Uh, but no foul call. Pass goes right into the arms of Cade Rogers. He's going to give it to Northcroft, who's not going to take the three. And lobs it up to Hunt, who gets intercepted by goal or by LaPointe, sorry. Hounds can't score so far in this overtime. <laughs> yeah, Hounds not minutes. performing well. A lot of mistakes and miscues so far. Good, good interception of the ball uh, by Rogers, uh, but not taken advantage upon by Northcroft. Shots no good. Second effort is going to go in, and now Freeman is up by five. Hounds in a pretty bad situation now at this point in the game. Try to score quick. Double this is kind of what we Rogers. worried about, playing with that defeated energy. Ball goes through the hands of Hunt. Foul is called number two. And that'll bring Hunt to the line. Making these two free throws is going to be really crucial as there's just over a minute left. It's going to be really hard for them to score a couple more buckets. Putting them within three at least gives them a decent chance to have a couple uh, shots at the ball. Hunt not the best free throw shooter. He is able to get one, just bounces off the front of the rim. See if he can get the second one. Would be huge for the Hounds here to put him within one possession and give them at least a chance to hit a three. And he does put in two. Two good bounces result in the Hounds getting two points out of that possession. Freeman now with the ball. Hounds are going to need a stop here. Hodges trying to look for someone to pass to. Ends up finding Coiner in the corner, and he bangs a three. And that could be the dagger. Hounds now down by six. Pretty big deficit for the Hounds to make up now. Need a couple big shots. Northcroft doesn't have the three. Tries to take a shot, misses. Quan comes down with it and gets blocked by LaPointe. LaPointe having a phenomenal end to this game. And now the Hounds are in big trouble with 30 seconds left to go and down by six. Very minimum, two possessions left. No fouls by the Hounds. And finally, a foul is called. Although nearly 15 seconds came off the clock and they're gonna get to shoot. And this is not looking good for the Hounds. Freeman looking like they might be able to take away this game from the Hounds in overtime. A clutch shot from a point giving them this opportunity. And they're looking like they wanna win it now more. Hodges sinks the first one, sends the score up to a three possession lead of seven. And that sends Freeman up to 60. Freeman up by eight. Pullman's little to, to yeah, score in this overtime. Little to no chance. Pawaki lets the ball roll. Rogers takes it. Try, probably going to try to get up a quick shot. Need to get the shot up now. Northcroft takes one in traffic. Or sorry, Pawaki in traffic. Gets a second shot. And misses that one too. Foul on the shot. He'll shoot three. Going to need to make at least two of these to get within two possessions here, but with 13 seconds left, it's looking pretty improbable. Most likely gonna need three and then gonna have to foul and hope that the free throws don't fall for Freeman. Bucky hits 20 points. Four of the Greyhounds do have four fouls. Yeah, this game definitely not lost at the hands of Pawaki. As she goes above 20, hitting 21. A new 
much a new player sprint for Pullman since a lot of the Pullman players do have four fouls. Pawaki goes for a Shaquille O'Neal, and that's not allowed. <laughs> doesn't hit the rim. On the first free, fro free throw, yeah, it doesn't hit the rim, misses just over. Tries to get those extra points, uh, but ends up not coming up empty-handed. And with just 13 seconds left, Hounds are going to need a miracle here if they want to get six. What this is essentially going to require, since Freeman has the ball, is a couple instant fouls and a lot of missed free throws on the Freeman side. So the Allens have 13 seconds for a miracle to happen. Great job by Freeman to get this team into overtime. They played that about as well as they could, had under 10 seconds left on the clock, and were able to get a quick shot off in the corner and bring this game to overtime. And all that momentum instantly shifted to the Freeman side of the ball, and Hounds kind of came into it. And all of Pullman's four points in overtime all come off of free throws. Yeah, no real offensive production in overtime, leading to the Scotties being able to take the lead as all five Hounds defenders are pressing. Pass is made, gonna have to foul, and the foul is called. Two seconds taken off the clock, now at 11.3. Northcroft fouls out of the game. He's gonna have to leave the game. Yeah, this is another interesting predicament. Hopefully the fouls are gonna not come from Pawaki as he could get fouled out of the game too. And he's been their main source of production so far in this game, having the most points by quite a wide margin. Zem shoots his first shot, no good. Missing this keeps the Hounds within two possessions. And he does miss both. Pawaki able to rebound it. Clock under 10 seconds. And a timeout is called. Just over seven seconds left. So with the way this timing has gone, the Hounds may be able to get a possession in Ara, although it is going to be hard to inbound the ball and get an open look right off rip. Hounds might have to settle for a deep three attempt, uh, which the Scotties might allow, or something of that nature. And it's going to be very hard to get open. And the Hounds essentially need to get a shot off immediately and then foul right away. I think it'll be like for Block to hit a three here. I see the best three point shooter on the team. If the score of this game stands, Hounds would fall to two and two, and Freeman would move to a winning record of two and one. Neither of these teams have yet to play a conference game. However, Hounds are already off track of their undefeated season from last year. Both teams still well in contention for their respective leagues. Freeman in the 1A division, Pullman in 2A. Hector with the inbound. Hecker has to get it in. Pawaki needs to put up a shot. Is able to get a clean shot off, but no good. And that will essentially be the game. Foul is called with one-tenth of a second left on the clock, but it won't matter. They're going to make him shoot the free throws. But this game is over. So the Greyhounds moved to 2-2, two and two, and the Scotties are going to go to 2-1. and one. Hounds face Colville next on the road. First shot is off the mark. 
two exciting games this week. One falling in the favor of the Hounds. This one, Hounds are not so lucky. Great ending performance by Freeman and they deserve this game. Great way to finish for the Scotties. And Hounds fall short 54-60 in overtime is your final. I'm Blake Dobbins. And I'm Matthew McBurdy. And you've been watching Hound Central. Go Hound.